In today's video, I am going to be breaking down John Stockton and how he shot the basketball. He was one of the greatest players and shooters in NBA history, so let's get down, let's check out John Stockton, how he shot the ball, and how you can also shoot the ball better as well. Let's get down, let's check him out. Okay, so this was one of his most famous shots that he ever took. And there's a lot of close-up footage, and we can learn a lot from this shot. This is an absolutely amazing shot. So, of course, he hops off his right foot to a two-foot jump stop. His right foot is angled towards the left side, and he did this in a lot of his different shots. From there, what we do see is that his knees do come together, and, of course, this is something that happened probably close to 80 to 90% of the time for John Stanley. Stockton. From there, when he did shoot that ball, when he did a spot up shot, he usually had his shoulders in over top of his knees and over top of his toes. However, what we do see here is on a jump stop, his back was actually in line with his heels or the floor. And we can also see that he shot with his heels on the ground and other close-up shots that I do have show that his heels are generally 90% of the time on the ground when he is going up into his set point. As soon as he gets into a set point, he rises up onto his toes, which then engages the Achilles and the calf. We have to remember that the Achilles is what gives you your spring. Your calf is what gives you a lot of your power combined. It's a fast twitch muscle, and it's an absolutely fantastic way to be able to get up into the air quickly. Now, what we do see from this angle at least is, of course, he is looking at the rim, and we can see that his offhand is right on the side of the ball. We can also see from this angle that when he releases the ball, he has a split finger release without a thumb flick. Now, of course, his left hand does point towards the rim. However, with that split finger release, that tells me that he is really trying to get that elbow most likely underneath that ball. And we can see that here where that basketball is actually right over top of that shoulder. Why is this important? Well, this is important because even though this is a distance angle from that shot and it's a bit blurry, we can actually assume by having that basketball over top of his shoulder beside his head or just above his right side of his forehead but to the, to the right side of it, we can assume that that elbow is in line or maybe just a bit more in line or to the left of his shoulder. That's why he had that split finger release. From there, we can see that we he has between a 45 and a 90 degree angle on his elbow. Now, a 90 degree angle will give you a lot more speed on your shot. Meanwhile, a 45 will give you a lot more power. When you're in between, it's going to be kind of the best of both worlds. When he does go up to release, we can see that he has a very, very interesting release. Now, I say very interesting is because, first off, he has a super wide hand. Why is that important? Well, a wide hand is going to allow you to have more control over that ball. By seeing those shadows between the fingers, that tells us that his palm is off the ball, and... This tells us that he has a lot of control over that ball. If his elbow was to get hit, he wouldn't really wouldn't really matter all that much to John Stockton because with a wide hand, it's going to be much easier to shoot a straight shot. We also see that after he releases this ball, he has what seems to be a weird weird release. Now, usually, you would try to stop players from having their hand go out towards the left side. However, what we do see here with John Stockton is after he releases, he has almost a hard or a soft release, more like a hard wrist with soft finger release. And then, on top of it, then his right hand, his shooting hand, kind of goes off towards that left side. But we can see that that ball has a lot of rotation, usually that kind of a release will give that ball a lot of either no rotation or sideways rotation, which is actually what we see here. We see a lot of rotation, 
but it's a lot of what looks to be sideways rotation, which is a very interesting factor considering that the ball went into the basket. And we actually see this with a lot of different clips with John Stockton. The only issue with a lot of that footage is it's not close up and it's blurry. So we can't really see definitively that he has that sideways release on every single shot. But when we start looking at the blurry footage, because of course he played in a very long time ago, we can see that he did that quite a bit. Now does that mean that he was a bad shooter? No. In fact, he was a 38% three-point shooter way back in the 80s, which is when he was playing. That is very, very interesting. So his he went to Gonzaga University from 1980 to 84, and then he played up until 2002 for the Utah Jazz. He had that sideways release in a lot of the video clips that we have, even from his later days. So to me, that's just something that's kind of interesting. Usually you would want to have a player who releases forward, but John Stockton didn't. Could that be why he shot 38% and not 40%? Potentially. But at a 38% clip, that's not terrible. 36% or better is actually a better possession than going in for layups because layups are never hit at 100% anyways. Anyways, I hope that this video has helped you become a better three-point shooter. If it has, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.